Hello, Romeja. You are welcome to this program, Success Speaks. And first of all, I give you a lot of congratulations to you and your family for securing sir. All India 185 ranking. You really passed it. So Thank how you, you so much, sir. How are you feeling and how is the feeling in your family going on these days? Mm. Sir, I'm feeling very, very happy at the moment. Uh, my family is over the moon. Uh, to add, you know, to the celebration is the fact that uh, very few people, in fact, uh, no, nobody in the recent past from my region has uh, cleared the exam. Uh, I was, I'm, I have topped the district as well as become one of the youngest uh, in the state as well, as well as the country. So everybody is really excited about it. People of my town are celebrating. So it's a very, very happy feeling uh, to be in, especially for my parents. You are the youngest right now overall in the country, as you said. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm one of the youngest is what I've been told, sir. Actually, in the very first... I'm 22. Time. I'm 22 yeah. years currently, so... It is very, I've very told right in the early age. That is 21 is the first uh, age limit when you start and 22 yes, years. Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely, you're going to get uh, Indian police service, I believe. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, and I hope you're going to appear again, as you can understand from your space in there, right? Hmm? Yes, sir. I will be applying. Uh, uh, Rumeja, first of all, I would like to know about the place where you were born and brought and who are there in the family, so that the audience understand about you more in the success story. Right? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, I was born in uh, a small town called Pullari in uh, Trishu district of Kerala. Uh, yes. I did most of my schooling here itself uh, until 12th standard. And after that, uh, my big change came when I moved to Chennai for my degree, which is a BA in economics. So from there, it, uh, you know, broadened my mindset. And from a small town, I was suddenly exposed to the lives and, you know, uh, life of a, a big city. And it changed my worldview and mindset a lot. I was exposed to a lot of new ideas and uh, uh, new people. And uh, it really inspired me to take uh, the civil services seriously. So before we come to talk about how the journey began, who are there in the family and what they're doing? Can you just say a bit about them? Yes, sir. My father is a businessman. Uh, my mother is a homemaker. I have an elder sister and an elder brother. My elder sister is a doctor, a dentist by profession, and currently uh, she is uh, staying abroad. My brother graduated in law and is currently doing an MBA from IIM Kodikod. Okay, so how this idea came for you especially because your sister is going to brought yes, sir. your father in the business, but how this idea yes. of getting into civil services came into it. Which service primarily you want to go for? So primarily, uh, I want to join the Indian Foreign Service. Uh, however, the idea of civil services itself was not new to me at all because in Kerala, we see the district collectors are respected by a lot. And uh, whenever they are here or when they, whenever they do something good for the society, it is often, you know, uh, discussed a lot and it inspires a lot of youngsters, especially me when I was uh, a young school student. However, I realized that I had more of an aptitude for the Indian Foreign Service when I went to college and I started taking part in debates and competitions such as the model United Nations. So from then on, I thought maybe I should, you know, steer the course into the foreign service. As you are very clear about Indian foreign service, you have to go. So what kind of role you see that you can play which is attracting you to join Indian foreign service? I have a background in economics. So I have always been interested by the dynamics of trade and relationship between different countries and how the world entirely revolves around uh, money whenever any major thing happens, be it the global recession or the ongoing trade war. So I believe that with my background in economics, I would be able to, you know, give the best in terms of strategic policy and decision making at the highest level. It would be, I would consider it the utmost of honor to be able to represent uh, my nation at a multinational institute such as the World Trade Organization or the IMF where, you know, uh, a lot of my core interests meet and that, sir, would be my dream uh, job. Romaja, this is a very wonderful clarity about your goal. This is a wonderful clarity and concept which is your in mind, which has become one of the biggest reasons for your selection in the first attempt itself. 
because what you, we sir. were preparing naturally, we developed that kind of aptitude very naturally of that. Okay, and I, I wish you in advance next year you will be one of the toppers. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Hopefully, hopefully. hopefully sir. Top time there, right. Yes, now, sir. when it comes to preparation, of course, this decision must have come from the family that you should go. Everybody came to support you. Right. Yes, sir. So yes, how, sir. What was kind of atmosphere? Of course, Kerala is known for education and development. Okay. Yes. Yes. Sir. So, what kind of atmosphere you had in the family from the beginning? Sir, I would say my family has played a huge role in, you know, making me what I am today. So, from when I was young, my parents have played a huge role in inculcating a, a healthy reading habit in me. Uh, so that I used to read a lot, be it both fiction and non-fiction. I grew up uh, reading uh, many such books. And my father is also responsible for inculcating uh, the habit of reading the newspaper in me. So I could say that I was, a, as a child, I was quite uh, aware of what was happening around me. And moreover, they, they supported me all throughout when I, were, I wanted to take part in any kind of competitions. They used to go out of the way and make special efforts to take me to different places and other schools. So that definitely helped me a lot. It means the family wanted always to give you wider exposure. Yes, everything. sir. Yes. Yes. Now, Rubeja, it's a question of preparation because it's a very fast attempt. At yes, such a young and early age, you got selected with such a beautiful rank. Yes, so sir. naturally, it will be of great interest to the audience who are planning to appear, those all as parents were stuck somewhere in the preparation to understand from you okay, how yes, it all happened with you. So, well begun is half done. This is a very old saying, right? Yes, sir. I can understand from your rank in the very first attempt at such a young age as 22, you have got 185 rank. Yes. So, definitely you have begun very well. So, how did you begin your preparation? Sir, indeed I agree with uh, the, the statement that you mentioned, sir. So before beginning, I would say that uh, the thing that I did the most was to find out the right strategy and right methods as to how you can clear the exam. So just like any other aspirant, I spent a lot of time browsing on Google and YouTube, uh, looking at the various strategies that are told by toppers. However, in addition to that, I also did another thing, which is to find out how exactly to study. That is most often toppers and uh, people are very keen on telling you what subject to study, which books you should refer to. But uh, most often they stop short of telling you how exactly to study and what are the best methods of studying. Mm -hmm. So apart from UPSC, I looked at other, uh, other you know, websites telling what are the best scientifically proven methods which help you retain your uh, information better and improves long-term memory. Because for UPSC, you definitely need to remember things for at least, you know, one, one and a half years. And you, it's not like how I used to study in college where, where you study just on the day before of the exam, put an all-nighter and go into the exam hall half asleep. So I knew that I had to change that habit and make it more sustainable. Okay, so the point here is like a, at which standard or, or you say at what age you begin preparing? Uh, sir, uh, preparing seriously for the civil services began only after I finished my graduation. Okay. So after my graduation in Chennai, I went to Tiruvannadapuram where I joined an institute. And from then on, I prepared for uh, 11 months and then wrote prelims uh, of 2019 and then the process began, sir. So it was all uh, after you began after the graduation was over, then you started making yes. preparation. But yes. initial exposure to the exam and basic uh, research work which you had already done, as you nicely said right now, right? Yes, yes. Now, for any first-timer or anybody who is yes. stuck in this preparation, right, what would you like to suggest? What should be the first strategy, first approach that one should follow so that yes, he sir. can have a sense of surety to get this service? So, like I said, equal importance should be given as to how exactly you should study. There are various ways of tackling each subject, be it polity or geography or modern Indian history or even economics per se. So, each aspirant should make sure that they are doing it in the right method possible. 
for example uh, when you are looking at polity uh, there is a very good method of studying that is by connecting it to your current affairs for example if there is an ongoing issue with regards to governor and uh, there is some prob some political uh, happenings in within a particular state that would be a good time to refer to the uh, the textbook the standard textbook and look at what are the constitutional provisions so in that way you are able to connect what is happening to what is theory so in that way it will retain or you know stay in your memory in a much better format so likewise there exists similar strategy for each subject and following that will make the journey more pleasant and you know it will make it more enjoyable rather than studying by road you have picked up very nice thing you said about the current affairs it is a challenge yes. for most of the students they read this paper they don't yes, know what sir. to read what not to read yes, so sir. how to select relevant news or articles and material from the newspapers and yes. current affairs sources what 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 should be the right approach to that i would say there's just one word that is syllabus of upsc Very so nice. upsc has given uh, a very comprehensive syllabus as far as mains is concerned so what i used to do was whenever uh, i was reading the newspaper i would maintain a digital uh, record using a, an app called evernote which is free of cost and is available to everyone so i would make specific note titles with each of these syllabus and whenever i saw an interesting topic an anecdote a statistic or an interesting infographic i would add it to that particular note so that way all the information that i gathered came up in a very systematic manner and it helped me a lot when i was you know preparing for mains and uh, it helped improve the content of my answers or from a discussion one important thing has come that to get what is relevant and not relevant the yes. most important guidelines would come from the syllabus syllabus and yes. nicely fit yes. yes 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 with their polity economy geography current economy everything is going to yes. be there so but the next important thing which you say that we have used technology yes sir for preparation so how in the present time technology can play a such a crucial role in preparation with your experience i would like you to speak a bit more on that absolutely sir <laughs> sir i am proud to say that i have used it a lot and we all know that upsc preparation entails a lot of uh, materials so very often you walk into an aspirants room you can find it to be having a sea of books all around them the aspirin would be sitting in the middle of it mm. so i prefer to do a lot of things in a digital format and that streamlined my preparation and overall it gives you a very clean organized outlook for everything so like i mentioned earlier i use the evernote note taking app for making current affairs notes as well as integrating notes from my classes or even notes which are available online i used to rely on previous year stoppers notes apart from these i used flashcard apps which were very helpful in memorizing some hard facts for example some things in art and culture uh, map study memorizing articles of our constitution all of these may not always have a logical connect these should be memorized by repetition at uh, at you know regular intervals so for doing this the use of flashcard apps uh, help me a lot so that is something uh, fresh aspirants can try very nice very nice that these are actually how much organized in your preparation that yes sir. makes yes. a lot of difference all through yes sir. yes nice. sir. how did you also have uh, start with ncert books you studied yes sir i did start with ncert books however i focused more on uh, higher level uh, classes especially for polity and i think for history all books from 6 standard and upwards is important for when it comes to history sir so to clear the fundamentals i think in ncert yes. a book of 10 yes, plus we were going to be how many times you read only once or you repeat it some of the reading sir uh, i believe in in the philosophy that uh, if you are reading something then you should always go back to it so okay. aspirants always uh, tend to get in that uh, kind of loop where they try and refer to maximum of resources it gives them a false sense of security or feeling that i have studied a lot but okay. in fact it may not help you retain everything uh, at the okay. same rate Correct. so i refer to limited sources 
but i went back to them multiple times like four or five times i went back to it so it solidified the knowledge in my head sir and it really helped me a lot this is very important because yes it's how you are going to repeat the things yes, of scanning through so many resources if you are yes. having some defined resource and yes when you are going to focus on that makes the difference there Now there are three stages of examination. How do you feel about pre and mains? Should there be separate preparation, or according to should be integrated preparation for pre and mains? Sir, uh, I believe that uh, it should be a mix of both because at the end of the day, syllabus does not exist in silos. But in the strategy with which how we are going to do the exam is where all the difference comes in. Right. the studying or retaining of information is almost similar for both the topics but for prelims you need to give specific uh, let's say preparation or strategy for uh, learning how to answer questions more effectively for that you need a lot of practice in some questions some guesswork is required in some question you need to practice skills such as elimination of options which will help you get to the right answer even if you don't know uh the answer to that question similarly for mains uh, studying part would be similar to that of prelims again the practice or uh, practice should come when you should be writing questions uh, in order to be well versed with the structure of how your mains answer should be you should be well versed so that you will be able to finish your paper in time so for all of these is where you know the difference comes in so this is very interesting that everybody should know integrated preparation but there should be some approach which is different a bit from each other that has to be kept in mind now yes, if i ask you some crucial things to keep for pre yes, in mind yes, to qualify because you attempted once and you have already qualified in but final success also so yes, some special things to keep in mind so that one gets a sense because now the prelims exam is about to come on 4th yes, of october yes this will give a good message to the students what are the factors that they should keep at this point of time and what should be the area of focus and what kind of practice other thing they should do what would you like to add on that sir with less than 2 months to go i think around 55 days are left for, for prelims so i would say that uh, for every aspirant they should stop looking up new new uh, books or new topics per se instead they should focus on what they have already studied in the period of time that they have assuming that the student has started preparation at least you know a minimum of 6 months before so right. they should focus yes they should focus on uh, revising and recollecting all that they have already looked at once the second thing is that stick to the basics sir so every year we see enough and more questions from topics such as polity economics and modern indian history so if you have these three topics very well versed it will definitely help you clear but if you try and focus a lot on some topics such as science and technology or art and culture the problem is that you may not always be able to predict what kind of questions upsc may ask because the area is very dynamic and very vast so as an aspirant you might feel very helpless if you are trying to study uh, all of it in one go so i would say stick to the three core topics very well and make sure that you are 100% well versed in all of that That's and the last thing is is definitely to practice you know more question papers uh, i used to do at least one paper every day in the in the past in the previous two weeks uh, leading to mains so that really helped me uh, uh, to the prelims basically they are at the last moment especially not to pick up so many new things Yes, but to revise all what you have made, and then yes. also to 
focus on some core areas where yes. there will be a large number of questions to come, right? Yes, so yes. Practice, these three things. But on the day of examination, that is again a very important thing. Just a few days before the exam and on the day of the exam, what yes, are the sir. basic parameters or you can say the cautions important for the aspirants? Please tell something about that. Sir, uh, on the eve of the exam, I made sure that I had closed all my books. Uh, okay. I did not study anything or look at books on the eve of the exam because I knew that it might trigger, you know, some kind of nervousness in me. But it, it varies according to the individual. It was like that for me. The, every student must try and uh, work out what works best for them. But the core idea is that on the eve of the exam and on the day of the exam, you should be uh, pleasant, you should be relaxed and you should be happy. And you should feel happy that you're going to do this big thing which can potentially uh, bring a lot of change in your life. So That's the positive outlook in place of thinking that tomorrow exam and uh, what will happen. Whether I, yes. So if going with this anxiety and stress, yes. so that means the mind will not be efficient to take, take the right decisions yes. during the exams or not. Yes. And it yes. is a question of just two hours in the exam. It's, it's yes. Paper. That's very good. Uh, you are very clear about that. Now let's talk something about the mains example. Yes, sir. Of course, yes, sir. you said about the integrated preparation, but we can take paper-wise a bit of discussion on that. Uh, the first thing I would like to know from you about the essay paper. Yes, Most sir. of the time, the students do the mistake. They take the essay at the last moment or they don't prepare it at all. Do you think it is not to be take, it is correct to take at the last moment or it should be done from the beginning itself? And what do you did? Uh, sir, essay again uh, has has a huge chunks of marks, which if ignored can you know make or break you. Very often, uh, aspirants either get a very good rank because of essay, or they miss out from the final list because of a bad essay. So essay is very important. So what every aspirant must do is that, along with mains preparation and answer writing, at least. Once every week, they should write an essay. They should practice it. If, especially if you're a person who have trouble elucidating, you should definitely do more practice. Sir, as far as I was concerned, I was lucky to have a good command over uh, the language as well as I had uh, interest in writing. So essay kind of came uh, in a not so difficult manner for me. However, that did not stop me from preparing because for UPSC essay, uh, the requirements are different because you need to make sure that every point you make is substantiated with facts, examples, and good anecdotes. So uh, whenever I used to read the newspaper, I would keep a separate note in my Evernote app for essay and ethics. So whichever thing I found to be very interesting or very nice, for example, a good incident happening, a good ethical incident that happened in the country, some example from around the world, all these tiny anecdotes, I will collect it. This may not seem like current affairs or newsworthy uh, at the moment, or it may not be important for prelims. But these kind of small things will come handy to you when you are writing an essay or tackling your ethics paper. So that is something that really helped me a lot, sir. And I would do that. In essay, as we all know, there are three, uh, say, the parts of that, you know? Yes, yes. Body and conclusion. So I would like you to highlight on that, a bit, say a bit on that. I would usually start off the essay using a brief introduction. An introduction would almost always be either a quote or an anecdote. Uh, sir, in the actual mains 2019, I took up the topic of uh, related to success, that is hard work and perseverance and the willingness to change lead to success. And the topic was something along those lines. So I started my essay, sir, by quoting an incident related to disaster management. That is, I quoted saying that in 1990, when a huge super cyclone hit Odisha, more than 10,000 people were killed. However, years down the line, almost 20, 25 years down the line, when in 2019, another super cyclone hit Odisha, the casualty came down to less than 10. And that was something I defined as, you know, an example of success, which was done from, you know, improvement of the past, like the state administration and the national administration 
made a lot of changes in the disaster management policy that helped you know succeed uh, in that is that is kind of how i define success so that is where the importance of anecdote comes in so i started off like that and then try to define success in multiple uh, areas so when an aspirant is writing an essay make sure that it it does not go in a linear fashion or it is not u- unidimensional rather they should try and bring in elements of social political economical gender related environment issues to even a philosophical essay so that way your essay would be very interesting and and vibrant to read the disciplinary approach of examining things which yes, is a kind of lateral approach of thinking on right yes sir. yes sir. yes sir. very right and uh, when you would write the main body yes, what sir. are the precautions to be taken care of so that it goes in flow the main precaution is that you need to plan your essay that is as soon as you get the topic you shouldn't like jump into writing it rather you should uh, take a moment i used to take at least 20 minutes before writing the essay like in the total uh, i think 3 hours that we get i would spend the first 20 minutes before each essay trying to brainstorm i would make a mind map or i would jot down the points once i've jotted down the points the next thing i would do is i would number them that is i would number them on the basis of priority like i know that this point is most important so this should come first and then i'd put number 2 in 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 the order of priority i would do that and finally i would save a good anecdote for the ending so that so that the conclusion is also good we must ensure that the conclusion is also good because mm-hmm. it is it is the last thing that uh, the examiner is reading before putting marks so likewise we should make sure What that it is a well balanced essay why the conclusion is so important uh, sir i think uh, you know just like how you make a parting shot uh, like, essay, like uh, the conclusion is is the last thing an examiner might potentially be reading and it it can uh, either leave a good impression upon the reader or leave them in a bad taste so conclusion is very important and and it gives an overall a summary about your essay so yes. that the examiner would be again the idea would be reinforced in them that we have covered all these topics and it gives your final opinion etc sometimes uh, the examiner makes an opinion by yes, reading sir. your introduction and reading your conclusion they understand what you might have written in the body yes sir yes sir that is also true going to be very very important in that right yes sir. yes i i'm sure your sharing experience on essay paper will be Really, yes, really important. Yes, Romaya, now I would like to get your inputs also on the gender studies open on because there are four papers. Yes, sir. You have spoken very well about essay paper. Now let's take paper wise. If I ask you how to prepare paper one of gender studies, it means which includes history and culture, yes, geography, sir. and also society. So what what will you say on that? So uh, for GS one, uh, I found it one of the most challenging to score high marks, sir. because for some reason i was not so good with uh, geography uh, and uh, because the art and culture topic was so vast it was slightly difficult to cover everything however i would tell you what actually worked in enriching my answers so for mains preparation i used to maintain a notebook which was dedicated specifically for statistics diagrams uh, you know some codes or in terms of gs2 Uh, articles of the constitution uh, related to pertaining to uh, certain topics and uh, committees related to important issues so for gs1 in that book i would add all the figures which were related to geography uh, such as how to explain a cyclone how does the con- continental drift theory can can be explained what are the different faults etc similarly for art and culture i would draw the structure of temples and different temple architecture gandhara art so all of that i try to make some kind of figure and okay. these figures i would try and replicate in my answers so even if i am not so sure about or not having enough content these figures definitely gave some kind of good impression on the examiner and and it it definitely enriched my answers sir you were using sketches and the figures there that's very really, very yes sir yes sir and but uh, how to prepare if you want to suggest anybody about this three paper the yes. subject rather is three geography and uh, society so how, what one should do for that 
sir uh, again uh, it is a very tricky area because you also have to deal with topics such as world history and often the aspirant might go astray reading a lot so here the core idea should be to look into previous year questions of upsc for example even this year in 2019 there was a question on gandhara arc yeah. and as far as upsc is concerned it is not a new topic at all they have asked gandhara multiple times so i would say that if you look into previous year questions itself you will get a very good idea as to what kind of questions and topics upsc would like to focus on so we should firstly prioritize on repeated topics and then move on to the others same with world history uh, importance should be given to very important topics such as french revolution american revolution uh, and you know industrial revolution all that took place we should be very strategic while dealing with gs1 so say that if you analyze the previous year questions you will know yes, where the examiner tends to yes, focus sir. on right yes sir. yes sir. Yes, and that will give you a rough idea about okay, what you should prepare on history. What about geography, Mr. Sir? Again, uh, for geography, we should be actually do it more than uh, I would say uh, art and culture because it will definitely help us in uh, prelims uh, as well. So I focused on uh, preparing by learning to draw figures for all of these also because. Uh, it will definitely help improve the overall look and flow of our answers sir. and i refer to standard books itself i refer to uh, ncrt as well as go chen liang okay so you read all the basic books and what about society yes, for society i referred to newspaper notes which i had made it myself uh, throughout the one year and i referred to notes which were provided by my institute okay that's fine Hello friends my name is Dilip Pratap Singh Shekhawat I have secured all near rank 72 in this year civil service examination 2018 and now I am here to share my experiences of the mock interview for UPSC I think mock interview for UPSC is very very important because it helps you to assess your level of preparation for the actual personality test at the UPSC so in this context mock interviews always help you to give a very good feedback about your strengths as well as your weaknesses so you can always gain confidence from your strengths as well as you can learn from your weaknesses and rectify them in due course of time in this uh, sense i would like to mention the role of chanakya is academy the mock interview which i gave at the chanakya is academy was very helpful for me it was the last mock interview which i gave before the actual interview of upsc and it really helped me to gain that confidence level back because uh, i was facing a very low because my final interview mock interview didn't go really well because uh, i was facing problems like i was nervous before the interview and hence i went to chanakya is academy gave a mock interview there and the board was very professional it was very cordial they asked me all the questions related to my bio data they assessed my personality in a very nice manner and boosted my confidence in the right time and that helped me to go with full confidence in the actual interview and in this way i was able to get very good marks in the interview which helped me secure ias in this attempt so talking about paper 2 gender studies yes uh, what do you have to say about your study of preparation paper 2 sir uh, again for gs2 um, i had uh, prepared by focusing on standard textbooks a lot and then current affairs plays a huge role for example uh, be it government schemes from when it comes from social justice topic and uh, current uh, issues related to law and legislations all of them are mostly related to current affairs related topic so whenever you are reading the newspaper make sure you go back to the standard textbooks to know what are the actual provisions that are given in the constitution so that linking and studying would definitely help a lot and it will retain the information better and make the process more enjoyable and for international relations i used to maintain a very good uh, notes in my evernote app Uh, and would update as in when uh, certain things were happening so even that was uh, dealt in that manner so but this year i think uh, i mean last year gs2 was a very tough paper including for myself but uh, with the available knowledge and with the knowledge of certain articles we were able to finish the paper and uh, manage uh, writing manage is the term i would say sir 
I, I, I'm not sure of how well I did. Uh, let's wait for the, uh, okay. for the mark sheet. But you were connecting with more with current relevance that would make the paper more uh, meaningful. And yes. Right? Yes. Uh, yes. You are a student of economics also, and what is actually paper three, which is yes. science, technology, economics, and other subjects. First of all, I would like to know from you what is the nature of paper three, because it has got variety of subjects. What do you think could be the reason that UPSC has kept all the subjects together here? Sir, uh, I would say that uh, why UPSC has kept so is, is that it makes it a great leveler for everyone. That is, uh, nobody with any background has any advantage while writing UPSC. Because at the end of the day, you have to know everything. I come from economics, I know nothing about science. There will be engineers who, with a science background who know nothing about economics. So likewise, it's a, it, I feel it's a great leveler that UPSC has kept. So everybody is on an equal footing. And whoever puts the most effort would uh, come out victorious. Sir. It's a level playing. And this is more also current best. A lot yes, of situations are there. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Do you suggest some sources, especially some standard books or sources you suggest in paper 3? So for paper three, uh, what I would say to be honest was because my optional was economics, I did not have a particular strategy to cover economics because uh, it was done along with my optional prep itself. Mm -hmm. However, for environment and uh, science and technology, I believe there are a lot of standard textbooks available. Uh, the environment textbooks by a reputed institute is very good. Uh, and for science and technology, again, you have to refer to websites because the news keeps on updating. So I used to refer to the internet a lot. Uh, and using websites of uh, reputed institutes such as NASA, ISRO to know about uh, the recent launches, etc. is very good. So. Okay, government institutions and institutions, right? Yes, right. sir. Yes, sir. absolutely. Absolutely. So, Maja, of course, uh, this paper four, which is for very young girl like you to go with this paper yes. I, I, it will yes. be of special interest for me to understand what did you understand about the nature of this paper paper for ethics integrity and aptitude what examples are looking for sir uh, because the paper itself is of 250 marks this is uh, unlike uh, this this has ample scope to somehow bring out the character of the student or the aspirant in the paper itself because it's very vast. It's not limited to one or two questions, which we had to face when we were in school or something like that. Here, I believe UPSC can bring out some shades of the character into the paper. So I had kept that in mind. And uh, whenever I was preparing, uh, I would make sure that uh, your answers are in a very balanced manner. And that none, uh, and that uh, we ensure that all sides and dimensions are covered. And even if you are talking about one particular topic, we talk about both the pros and cons of it. So at the face of it, UPSC or the examiner would be convinced that we are looking at a candidate who is level-headed and who has a balanced view of things. And that I believe is something is a quality that every bureaucrat must have. Along with this, uh, to continue uh, with, to if I may add as to how I tackled uh, GS4, is that I used to again maintain separate note on my uh, on my Evernote app, whereby I would add uh, examples from real life and from uh, books that I read or even movies, uh, which you know kind of describes the value that is given there. So you have to take the syllabus and take each word in that syllabus. For example honesty, integrity. So for honesty and integrity, we can even quote from our epics like the Mahabharata or the Ramayana. You can quote the integrity of Lord Rama when you're talking about integrity. And uh, when you're talking about, you know, dedication and perseverance, you can quote a particular civil servant who did not bow down to pressure uh, from anybody. Uh, so all of these examples are very, very important in ethics, especially in from the 2019 example, a lot of questions pertaining to governance and specifically to the Indian civil services were asked. So 
uh, at one point i even ran out of examples i thought that i had a lot of examples with me but even then i ran out of it so every aspirant must make sure that they have a very good reservoir uh, of examples to put in their uh, answer sheet more and more on the practical side so that keep yes sir. when you read in the newspaper or you read any one of the yes, big class as you were nicely saying yes, so that sir. this can be taken as a reference and more practical or connected information you give better you will do in this paper yes sir so, yes sir this is more on the application side ki when you will go into administration how you yes, are going sir. to maintain the basic yes, three parameters of ethics and integrity and aptitude that's very yes, important sir. now uh, since you have taken i i think you have taken a uh, so subject as economics correct yes sir yes sir. that's your first subject there mostly yes, people even there those who do graduation post graduation they don't really dare to take the subjects very dynamic kind of subject so how yes, is your experience or you prepared from the beginning to take this optional <laughs> and you chose later on sir uh, to be very honest uh, there were several times when i second guessed when i was worried if i took the wrong decision by choosing economics because it is a very daunting subject to cover so okay. having only had a bachelor's degree um, i had to face a lot of difficulties in my preparation but i would say that uh, in the beginning of mains preparation i was really scared looking at the entire syllabus and i had not covered it fully before prelims itself so a major chunk was done only after the prelims was done okay. but uh, i tried to calm myself and take it one day at a time and then by slowly and steadily i was able to cover the entire syllabus and i focused and here again i strategized by focusing on my strong areas so there were two particular topics in economics that i was very fond of and i found that it was easier for me to learn which was development economics as well as international economics so i focus more on that and as you are aware for optionals you do have uh, the choice questions that is you can choose to answer something or not and uh, thankfully uh, when the paper was in my hand i figured that uh, i could choose to answer the topics which i was well versed in and that i am hoping uh, worked in my favor so if i ask you okay, what should be the criteria of selecting one optional subject so with your experience what would you like to say now sir uh, the criteria to put it short is something that you as an individual enjoy because optional is something that you have to spend a lot of time studying in perhaps more than your gs papers itself so i am a lover of economics from when i was a student Uh, at school and uh, therefore taking economics was not a tough decision to make likewise for anybody else even if you are choosing something which you are completely uh, new to make sure that you play around with it like you give it ample time like for two or for a week or so try and attend classes teaching that particular subject and uh, only if you are really interested in it go ahead otherwise you have to you know a uh, throw yourself open to other options you mean to say you sh- one should give a main priority to the interest if you don't have interest yes. you will yes, not sir, be don't able take to it subject do yes. well yes sir Whether yes you have background or you don't have background doesn't matter doesn't What matter you put interest to that very yes, good very good nice. yes. now you at such a young age you have gone to in civil service personality test yes sir and you have an experience there so i would like to know a bit from you about that yeah what do you think the selectors look in you in the personality test when my uh, interview dates were announced uh, i was really scared i was almost on the verge of tears when i found that my date was 17th of february which is literally the very first day of the interview i was very scared and i barely had 20 days for preparing however I, you know my mentors and my parents gave me a lot of support and they gave me the confidence saying rumeza you have it in you to like you know tackle this so i believe that uh, i was lucky enough to have had a background you know of uh, public speaking and uh, debating and that definitely helped me in my communication skill and uh, it helps me think clearly as well so i believe that the important things that the selectors look in you are your confidence your clarity and how well uh, you know you are able to balance things out are you diplomatic enough in your answers 
these are the few things I, I believe they look into. How, how uh, they begin there when you entered uh, in the interview board, how it all began. Can you just let me know the definitely. about that? Definitely, sir. Sir, uh, so when I went into the interview room, uh, it was it was in the afternoon. Um, and I was, I think, uh, the second last one to go. So there was a fair bit of uh, waiting in the waiting room. And that is where your nerves really start to take in. Okay. So when I was waiting, I used to try some meditation methods, take deep breaths in order to keep myself calm. But once you enter the uh, interview room, then you are completely taken away and you no longer uh, feel scared because you are there at a position where you've always dreamed of uh, being at. Uh, my chairperson was Sujata Mehta ma'am IFS and uh, there were four other members so my questions began with my background so ma'am asked me why I had quit uh, or I had uh, rather rejected an offer from an MNC where I had interned at so I yeah. had interned at Goldman Sachs and ma'am asked me why would you quit uh, such a lucrative job so it started off like that and they asked me a lot of questions from yeah, economics. What did you reply for that the audience would be interested to know? How do you respond <laughs> to that? What did you say? Uh, sir, I said that uh, there were mainly two reasons why I did not take up the job. Because after my exposure to the corporate world, I found that it was not truly my area of calling. And I had always uh, interested in writing the civil services. So I thought uh, I'll give it a go right now and then uh, if it doesn't work out or something, maybe I'll go back to the corporate world. But you prefer for Sujata, madam, since he's from Indian Foreign Service and you yes. also had a first preference as Indian Foreign Service. Did you get some questions related to Foreign Service? Surprisingly, no, sir. Everybody had asked me this, but uh, for some reason, she did not ask me anything about uh, the Foreign Service. Rather, okay. it was entirely about economics and uh, uh, Indian okay. economy when issues. You did the any situation where you found that it was difficult for you to come out, which would love you like to, or any stress, stress kind of thing happened there in the board? Sir, initially it went very smoothly. There was no cross questioning per se. They asked me what are the issues in health sector, what are the issues in education, how would you solve this problem? They were all testing my clarity on uh, certain topics. They, in fact, asked me about uh, Kerala model of development as well and what are the shortcomings of the same so all of these i was very well prepared in and i was able to answer with uh, quite a lot of confidence however towards the end uh, they started asking me more opinionated questions on um, you know topics such as demonetization so the sir asked me uh, what do you think how well has uh, demonetization helped and then after that uh, i was asked a question about uh, the ongoing uh, student protest and she asked me if campus politics was good or not so for both of these questions i was able to give a very balanced answer because there were positive sides and there were negative sides to both so i believe that the way i tackled that would have probably you know uh, given me uh, good marks in the interview sir you were able to sell through and you came out the yes. discussion there right yes yes sir. so Rumaja, as you were also in uh, Chanakya's interview guidance program and mock interview, how this program helped you? What experience you got in Chanakya's mock interview? Uh, so coming to Chanakya, I would say that it was it was a very good experience because it was the interview that was the most close to the actual interview experience. So I had attended around five or six interviews before that. But um, I believe at Chanakya, the board and the kind of questions that were directed at me were more similar to the actual interview because um, they asked me questions which were pertaining to the conceptual clarity as well. Most often interview tend to focus more on just opinions or questions only about your background. Chanakya had, uh, you know, re-emphasized and reminded me that your subject knowledge is also very, very important when it comes to UPSC uh, interview exam. So after the experience at Chanakya, I went back and within the few, uh, you know, days I had left, I had tried and, you know, tried to read up a lot more about topics which were most likely to be asked. So that definitely boosted my confidence a lot, sir. You found a simulating condition there in which you have... Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, sir.
that there you found this sort of situation happening in your interview, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes, sir, absolutely. So, Major, your concepts are very clear, and uh, I'm sure your interaction with me definitely would help a lot of the students and yes. parents yes. To design their yes. program. And uh, we can also dream like you to be successful with good rank in the first term. And uh, I am sure in the next attempt, you're going to get your dream uh, career that is in the Indian Foreign Service with maybe very top 10 rank kind of thing right there, right? <laughs> thank you, sir. And thank all, you so thank much. Thank you very much for coming to this program. Success speaks, right? God bless you. Thank Just, you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank it was you. nice to meet you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.